In this video, I will be reviewing a concept project from one of my students. The challenge designing a landing page for Virgil Abloh and Nike's D10 collab. I always push beginners to think outside the box. That's why I picked this project. It's like the perfect project to practice asymmetry, deconstruction, and white space. My student, Andrea, or Andrea for my Spanish people, <laughs> has a background in graphic design, but is new to web design. Let's see how she tackled the challenge and where is room for improvement. Let's dive in. Here we can see the hi-fi design, okay, the final design, but we'll go through all the phases, the sketch, the wireframes, and obviously the final design, okay? You will see everything. Let's start talking about the project first. So I always provide my students with a guideline so they know exactly what they have to do, okay? It's like a step-by-step -step process. This concept project is an assignment for the members of the Elite Group, which is a group mentorship program inside of the Web Designers Collective. And yeah, I like to provide them with clear guidelines. Here in this document, I have an explanation of why I selected this project specifically, and also some information about Virgil and uh, the Nike collab, okay? And here we have an statement that says that this project will push them outside of their comfort zone, which is exactly the goal. Before we continue with the review, I wanted to quickly show you this. If you are a web designer or aspire to be one and need guidance like Andrea and my other students, you can fill out this form, okay? It takes one minute and I will point you in the right direction. I will leave the link in the description. So here we have this sketch and I always instruct my students to start the design with a sketch because I want them to think freely and not be constrained by any software or anything. And I know for some people it's challenging, but you have to go out of your comfort zone sometimes, right? If you want to advance. And you have to understand that the goal for this project is not about having like the most amazing UX, okay? It's about exploring different layouts and different, um, you know, techniques and also to express their creativity. We'll definitely worry about the UX later because it has to be excellent. However, this project is more about breaking the rules. My students have a very clear roadmap and the beginning is about creative expression. And then later they will learn about the you know, UX fundamentals and best practices and all that stuff. But I want them to be able to express themselves freely without being constrained, okay? So let's review the sketch. Here we have the Nike logo, the Off-White logo, also the, um, this other Off-White logo right here. And then here we have the menu. Instead of having the menu at the top, like you know most websites do, she just decided to add it here. And it's totally fine because we are not worrying too much about the UX here, okay? And then she has here this square that is probably an image. And this is very interesting because we see here this HTML code. And when I ask her about this, she said that she wanted to represent the, uh, you know, like the seams um, that are visible in the uh, Nike and Virgil Abloh shoes, right? And it creates this sense of roughness in the design, which is incredible. As we can see here in the shoe, we can see the seams and also the stitches, right? And this is what she wanted to represent with the HTML code. She wanted to represent this roughness, right? And it's incredible. It's a nice concept. We can also see this roughness and imperfection here. You know, this text overlaps with the uh, with the stitches. If I zoom right here, we can see this mark here. And this was basically a Nike logo and they removed it. So this imperfection and the construction is what she wanted to express with the HTML code. And I was obviously very happy when she showed me this uh, concept, this idea because uh, this is brilliant. The thought process behind this is great. And as you will see later in the hi-fi design, she made this uh, area right here functional, which is even better. Here we have the mood board and the mood board focuses more on uh, typography and shapes and not so much on images. It's totally fine, but I would add some more photos to better understand the brand's aesthetic. Now here we can see the wireframes and this one is another sketch. She changed the layout a little bit right here. Okay, and then here we have another wireframe that is more detailed. And we can see the elements and then the HTML code right here and here. Then we can see the picture placement, more HTML code, the form. And this HTML code is brilliant because as I said, it's a form. We can see the fields right here. And then we can see the submit button right here. Here we can see the footer section. 
and then here we can see an iteration and we can see some more details right here in this logo and then the footer also changed and here we have the typography research and this part is very important because we have to make sure that we research different typefaces and fonts to make sure we select the uh, best one for the project all right so here we have the final design and uh, i love the color selection and also the typography selection and i love the layout because it embodies um you know virgil's deconstruction and asymmetry philosophy I really love the HTML code, how it looks. <laughs> it's super cool. And I also like how she showed um, these lines right here on purpose, because these lines basically represent the guides that we can find in different design software like Illustrator or Figma, and it's cool. Here she used the same concept. This represents space between items, okay? And then here we can see more HTML code with some information about Virgil. Here we can see the off-white logo, leveraging the same concept we saw here. And then an image of Virgil, more HTML code here. And then the pre-order section. Here we have the raw HTML pre-order form, which is very cool. Here we have the uh, fields. And then here we have the submit button. Very nice. And finally, here we have the footer section, leveraging white space amazingly. In this project, we don't have a perfect grid. We don't have, um, you know, the perfect padding. We don't have the perfect spacing, but that's exactly what we want. She also created a very simple prototype and she has here some components and the color palette, which is uh, very nice. Let's check the prototype right here. All right, so here in the hero section, we can see all these logos, and then we can also see this uh, little search field. However, I would add a thicker um, outline because we can barely see it. So basically increase the outline or change the color to black, for example. And then when we scroll down, we can see this menu. And this is very nice because when we hover over these uh, menu items, we can see the off-white logo right here, right? Very cool. Here we can see this little detail, which are basically the shoes from the collection, changing in this uh, very simple transition. And then we have this arrow right here. When we click, it takes us up. And then same thing here. And then same thing here. Then as we scroll down, we can see the pre-order form. And then we can see the fields. When we click, they are functional. And then we have this link right here, which is the button. And then here we have the footer. Andrea's project strongly represents Virgil's philosophy, effectively using asymmetry and white space. I'm feeling a strong eight on Andrea's project, and it needs a little bit more of overlapping between elements, a little bit more of that glitchy feel, and also some intentional UI disruptions. But overall, it's an amazing project. Well done. Wait, before you leave, I have two things for you. So this is my flagship web design course and you can access it totally for free. And it's at free as well, so you can enjoy the content without annoying advertisements. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, it already has almost 90,000 views in only two months. So the feedback has been incredible and it's already changing lives. This course is very comprehensive. It's almost 18 hours long and I cover everything you need in order to become successful as a web designer. And remember to fill out this form. It's really helpful, okay? I will leave the link in the description. All right, so thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.